normally nine to nine and a half centimeters inside this brain, not millimeters, centimeters. That I can't brain has no pain. So even if I test the brain like this with my finger, he has no pain. I prick it with a needle, he has no pain. Oh, this is my passion. I've been playing since I was six years old. And you know, more than 30, 40 years I've been playing. And Uh, me and my wife were in a holiday in Hawaii, Highlands in the US, and he gave me a call. And he didn't know I was in Hawaii. He said, Doc, you know, I need to talk to you desperately. My hand is very bad. I said, Joe, I'm in Hawaii on a holiday. I'm coming back to US next year. I mean, next uh, three months later, if you want to meet, that didn't happen. And eventually, he has come here because he wants to get better. So, this is what is called stereotactic and functional neurosurgery. And this involves placing, you know, the Bagan Mahavijan Hospital has all the special equipment that we purchased. I had this training at, you know, with uh, my guru called Professor Tako Mitaira from Tokyo in Japan in the year 2015. He taught me this. He is the world's best in this whole procedure. And then what we do is we fix a special frame to the head called the stereotactic frame. Two screws in the front, two screws at the back, just go into the skull under local anesthesia. After that, the special MRI is captured. That MRI comes into my soft area. I'll show you that in some time. And we load the MRI there and we look at which circuit has to be targeted. It takes some you know, training for that. <clears throat> Once I get that point that I decide, ah, this is the point I have to work, then that point gives me the XYZ values, which is a physics concept called stereotaxy. So now, well, uh, we have to uh, now physics better, mathematics better. And the, uh, we don't want physics, we don't want mathematics. We become doctors, but we have to do a lot of calculation in this field. The, the actual surgery takes about two hours, but the entire procedure from fixing the frame to the MRI to the planning to the surgery to MRI and frame off takes about seven hours. This whole thing is under local anesthesia, is fully awake, and that's how it is. But I think it's worth spending seven hours, I think. In this yeah. And then we take him to the OT. I have to make a 14 millimeter hole in the skull and then put in an electrode into based on this XYZ uh, attachment that we get from the machine. Once I do that, I am normally nine to nine and a half centimeters inside this brain, not millimeters, centimeters that I can't see. That is where the technology, the computer and the technology training helps me to make sure that I'm in the right place and the patient feedback has to happen to make sure, which is why patient has to be fully awake. He cannot be under general anesthesia. He cannot be that. The common question people ask me is, Doc, how can you do you know, brain operation without anesthesia? It looks so risky and things like that. How is it possible? I said, that's why I always tell people the human body is designed for surgeons. You know, it's, that's how it is. And here the skin has pain, so we give a lot of local anesthesia. The brain has no pain. So even if I test the brain like this with my finger, he has no pain. I prick it with a needle, it has, he has no pain. It's amazing, so we take advantage of all of that. So this problem of the guitarist dystonia happens only when he holds the guitar and tries to play. Without the guitar, there's no dystonia. So it's not like a paralysis. So because of this, what happens is that we have to get him to play the guitar during the operation. And as I'm burning the circuit, this has to release instantly. It's amazing how it happens. You see, you watch the videos as I'm burning, it, it releases and he says, Doc, I'm feeling better, I'm feeling better. And we have to do seven burns inside his brain in you know, three different tracks and this burning is done using a special electrode we it's called radio frequency ablation we give 70 degrees centigrade temperature the normal human body temperature is 37 degrees centigrade and we do it for 40 seconds every time that means seven burns 70 degrees centigrade 40 seconds once we do that we call a lesion in the brain and show the mri with the lesion that is what happens once that happens and then his thing goes away and then we have a very strong rehabilitation team held, uh, you know, organized by PRS Neurosciences, the company I run. There we do a lot of assessments and therapy to retrain the circuits to go back to his, his goal of avocation of playing the guitar. So that is how it works and the uh, patients do very well through this. And I thought, oh, this is great. So I started working there and it was in my third year where I was working where I started having problems with these two fingers, the ring finger and the pinky. They would just curl inside automatically and I couldn't control it. I did not know what was going on. And maybe about five or six years later, our keyboard player who used to play in the band with me in Bahrain, he sent me a video clip of Dr. Sharon performing a surgery on Abhishek. That was the first guy who I performed it on. And he said, Joe, I think this might help you. You get in touch with this doctor. So I looked at it, I said, 
And strangely, the very next day, I was working at a church as well. I was doing a music ministry for them. And someone at the church, the pastor, he sent me a video. He said, Joe, check this clip out. And it was the same video clip. What are the chances of that happening? It was absolute surprise. So I looked at it and I was, oh my goodness. So I sent a message to Abhishek. I sent him an email and I said, hey, can you give me the information of, you know, who this doctor is? His phone number and all that. So Abhishek sent me all the information. So I sent an, um, uh, an email. I sent a message to Dr. Sharon. He responded back. And I, had, I said, okay, he's on WhatsApp. This is going to be easy. Not too bad. So I wasn't sure how much the surgery costs. And so, you know, I was working, you know, as much as I could to save as much money as possible because I don't know what the cost was going to be. Anyways, and uh, about... Uh, a few months ago I got in touch with uh, Dr. Sharon again and I said to him hey you know uh, I really need to do this because it was taking my heart this is my passion I've been playing since I was six years old and you know for more than 30 40 years I've been playing so, uh, if anybody's listening to this I'm telling you if you're in the USA get in touch with Dr. Sharon we put the information on the um, on the website and he's going to, you get, going to get all the, and I'm telling you, it's really worth it because this, you know, like I would literally, if I would put my fingers here to play, I would literally, my, I cannot lift these two fingers. I can't, now I can lift them up. I can lift them up. It's not a problem at all. But in the early stages, if I press, that's it. It's like a magnet. It gets stuck and I cannot re re release my fingers at, fingers at all. So I didn't know what to do, where to go, but Dr. Sharon was my only hope. And uh, I saved some money and I, I told Dr. Sharon, I'm going to come out to Bangalore to see you. So I left Los Angeles. I came out over here. And the 20th of October is when um, we came in here. 22nd was the surgery done. And uh, everything is fine now. The fingers are working fine. But if anybody's in the US and you're listening, get in touch with Dr. Sharon and he'll talk to you, you know, when it comes to whatever it is, uh, the price and all that stuff, he'll give you all the information. And it's absolutely worth it because I feel so much better now that, you know, I will be able to play in a couple of months. I don't know how close I'm going to get to where I used to be, but the future does look bright. It looks very promising. So I totally thank Dr. Sharon for what he's done. He's given me one of my passions back. So I totally thank you for that. The same surgeries are done even for people with Parkinson's disease and, you know, writer's cramp and things like this. I want to tell you one story recently. I'm going to do his surgery next week. He is a doctor, young doctor, who has writer's cramp. Same like guitarist cramp, you've got writer's cramp. <clears throat> it was so severe, it started when he started, he was reading his medicine, the MBBS, and he had to use cribe to pass his exams because he could not write. And this guy was working as a duty doctor in one of the hospitals in Bangalore, private hospital. And the director of the hospital had purchased this book of mine that I've written called Rebooting the Brain. And you know, uh, we only talk the technology language now, no medical language, rebooting the brain. All of you reboot your computer, you reboot your phone. I'm showing you how to reboot your brain. And then she was reading this book and he went and he wanted to resign from his job because he could not even write half a page of notes in four hours. And he just had there, severe pain. And she said, go to Dr. Sharan and that's why he came. We hope this reaches far and wide as many people as possible. We don't know who is the next Joe, who is the next Abhishek, who is the next Taskin, who is sitting there crying because the future is jeopardized because they do not know what is to be done. Like I said, Dr. Sharon will give you all the information of what is going to be done and if there's any discomfort, he'll tell you there'll be a little bit of discomfort, but just hold on there. So it's not crazy, you know, you don't feel like, oh my goodness, I'm going to die. Uh, uh, uh. No, no, no. Everything is under control. He knows exactly what he's doing, you know. That's usually what I say is like if you've got a car, you've got a nice Mercedes Benz, you're not going to take it around the corner to some Panwala shop, you know, to fix the car, right? You're going to take it to the Mercedes dealer. So Dr. Sharon here, he knows exactly what he's doing. He's a nice human being. He speaks very politely. He'll make you feel very comfortable, which is nice. But are you a good doctor? And I would say yes, he knows exactly what he's doing. And so, you know, I would say trust in what he's doing. He's been doing this for a long time and he's, he's done, I'm the third person, doctor. Yeah, third surgery. So, for, this, for, guitar. For, guitar. for guitar. So, I would say, you know, get in touch with him if you have any questions and he'll, he'll give you all the answers that you need and uh, you're going to be totally fine.